Hey, what's up, guys? This is A Million Little Things, the semi-final episode of the series. There are hearts filled with rocks tonight and maybe some conflict and heartfelt issues. So let's dive into it. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz <laughs> Oh my god, I cannot believe it's the semi-final episode of the season of A Million Little Things. I know! So close to the so end. So close to the end. And we are finally getting some answers where we're breaking down Maggie and Gary and then Roman Regina. And we're getting a bit more of a sense of her, his father and his brother who's got into the mix of things. And Eddie and Catherine going through the divorce issue. So those are going to be our three main focuses tonight. My name is Yasmin Tanras. I'm your host with my co-host. Takira Shabray. Woo. Good to see you guys again. Both of us over here. Happy Valentine's Happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day, yes. You know? And we're seeing, well, since we're going to get into Maggie and Gary, them two wanting to go to Plymouth, The Rock. Yeah. I was like thinking, hmm, The Rock, what does that mean? <laughs> like The Wrestler? Yeah. Or, no. <laughs> and then they're having to do all these pitfalls, all these pit stops to help out people, which was very cute. Overall, what did you think about this episode? I... I loved that. First of all, you know I love Gary. And he's like a special place in my heart. I I love that this episode it, it was kind of all over the place very slightly, only because like, you know, Gary and Maggie were helping in so many different areas and but I loved it because like you said, we get to know a little bit more about Rome, about his family, and then obviously like my goodness what happened between Catherine and Eddie, I know we'll get there, but <laughs> Um, yeah, that was pretty big. I didn't really expect it, um, but I think that it was just in life in general. It was a really good reminder that yes. things could end very quickly. But I loved it. It was um, it was a little. I, I, I at first I thought slow, but it was enough for me. Exactly. Was I enough. exactly. I feel exactly the same way. It felt like slow, but because there's been just so much drama already, right. so I feel like this was a proper. You know, we always know that the last one is just going to be such an epic cliffhanger, especially yes. having a season two coming out. So this one felt nice in a sense that we got more of an insight as of Rome and Regina again. You know, that was mm -hmm. like Regina had her moment last episode and now Rome is coming out with his side where we see his strength as well. Very mm -hmm. admirable against his father and his brother. And then yes. now Eddie and Catherine are having to really sort out their marital status. So we're getting closer to the brink of it all. And of course, like the ending, I mean, we were kind of perplexed about that. But let's <laughs> jump into first Maggie and Gary. Weren't they just so cute together? They were. Oh. Going on a road trip, but everything just... <laughs> kind of crossing their path. <laughs> it just maybe just wasn't meant to be for just that moment to it's, make it to Plymouth Rock. <laughs> it's constant, right? I mean, first off, they have to deliver the mattress to Roman Regina uh, because All of, of these are super random, by the way. Yeah, like random. But... Why? And, and especially since all the friends knew that they were going on this road trip and now having to ring him up. But it just comes to show again that the reliability that they have on him yes. and that he continues to support everybody no matter yeah. what. He's an amazing man. But he has those moments where he's like, nope, nope, we're going on this. And Maggie's the one who's like, no, let's help them out. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we also saw a little moment of him becoming vulnerable um, when Catherine, so we are going to get into Eddie and Catherine's case mm -hmm. a little bit more later, but then she decides to take him on as the guardian yeah. and he's like not knowing how, how to deal with it. Were and you, uh, were you surprised of his, like his initial reaction? Yeah. I just, I felt like, why is he not? thrilled about it seeing that we yeah. know he has such a great relationship with Danny he's great with kids and mm -hmm. then you'd think he's like happy to take it on um, what would you think like do you think I think maybe I don't I don't know I guess him not being a dad he maybe didn't initially understand how big like how like this is you like it's huge in a sense of someone trusts you this much and maybe that's why maybe he was just like 
I, I don't know. That's kind of what I took. And but I love that Maggie like really stepped in, and I'm starting to. <laughs> I'm going to save mine for predictions, but I love that she, like, reminded him, like, look, you wouldn't let me say no, so I'm not letting you say no. So, yes. Gary needs you to get with it. Yes, so I exactly. Love it. That was very strong. Yeah. And I feel like we kind of see then actually their similarities in a sense. I feel yes. like she's taken on a lot of what he has been doing throughout, but now he's like, this is my moment where I want to be selfish and just do mm. things on our own. And she's like, no. And ultimately, I think this was actually, I got to say this for my hashtag ABTV little things, <laughs> but there's, they, they've had their great moments just now. And I feel yeah. like as well, again, we saw a glimpse of Danny, sweet, sweet little Danny, his his date failed and then Gary had to come to the rescue and make a joke out of like lactose intolerance and whatnot. Yeah. And then Danny's like, okay, so actually it was my mom who messed up the entire date situation. And yeah. it just comes to show actually what a great choice he is in the end to become Theo guardian yeah yeah in um, a gary way in a very gary like I just love it playful way I love that man um <laughs> well before we get into some next playful acts in which omar steps into the game with rome's brother who's a little bit of a cheeky man mm -hmm. takira's got a good message for all of you lovelies who tune in to us and yes. all the other channels on after buzz because we love what we do. And look, before we move on to our next topic, we just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you for making us the ESPN of TV talk. For us to continue to do what we do and to continue to grow, we are needing your help because we love spending this time with you on a weekly basis. If you're on YouTube right now, hit that thumbs up button. We'll give you a couple seconds. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. And subscribe. If you are on iTunes, give us a five-star rating. Leave us a nice comment because we love seeing those too. But no matter where you are, leave us a comment so you can get involved into the conversation. And, you know, being a part of this extended panel, we, we love you guys so much. You know, we, we're up here, but we love you guys. You're our extended panel. We love to include you into the conversation. But being a part of After Buzz TV has meant so much to us, Yasmin and I, yes. and everyone else here. And we truly appreciate you supporting us and doing what we love. So don't forget to tell your friends and keep enjoying our shows. We love you. Yes, thank you. Thank you always for tuning in. And Tanya and everybody who's like always chiming into the conversation. It just like, it's so heartwarming because we always like like to get a different perspective so again yes. like every episode we love to hear your comments comment in the in our youtube and twitter tweet us whatever thoughts you have in mind yeah. um okay so let's get into roman regina first up dad appears we see a All nice right. moment between roman and dad i'm like thinking why is his dad being so nice and <laughs> they have such a nice relationship right now right. oh yes because dad wants to tell him oh your brother is gonna have to stay with you by the way hidden agenda as always, it's like too good to be true. Whenever somebody's <laughs> right. very nice, question mm -hmm. why. Um, but it w there was a slight cheeky moment there from his dad's behalf where he, where Rome is like, no, I don't even have a mattress. I do not want my brother, like I can't have him here. And then the father's just like, well, okay, well, I'll put him in a hotel because I've got all this money. And that yeah. led to Rome being like, okay, fine, I'm gonna take him on. Do you think the father, has this because of what we've seen let's say in the past mm -hmm. has this tendency of putting a lot of pressure on on rome and do you think there could be an extent to the extent of him being some of the root causes for the depression that rome experiences a hundred percent i mean you you literally took the words out of my mouth it's almost like yeah i mean rome said it best in this episode like that moment when he's like holding back tears and he tells his dad like because his dad was like oh, i don't have to worry about you and he was like well maybe you should like sometimes you should and so i i 100 percent feel like the pressures of rome being that image of a good son b image of a good husband i mean everything is on his shoulders and I know we had that moment last a couple of episodes ago whenever his dad found out about the pills and like him using that over his head a little bit as like a 
I don't know. I, I 100% feel like that has a little bit to do with that because he, it's like almost like he's so desperately wanting his father's approval. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? Dang it, just tell me I'm doing a good job. Yes. Like, every once in a while, just tell me you approve. Like, <laughs> See, that's the thing. I'm a little bit confused by his father because we've now seen Omar's character who is, who does... Like I've said many times, it's a cheeky guy who mm-hmm. seems to take things for granted. But also there is something because he is going through a divorce and we do find out that he's going from job to job as well. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of like not as on the outside perspective as stable, but interna- internally nobody really knew what Rome was going through. Right. And I question like, and I, maybe this is something that I've missed, but I also question, did Rome actually ever tell his dad the reason why he's taking antidepressants? I almost feel like he hasn't. I don't think that he went into hey, I almost killed myself and this is the reason why. Because I was kind of questioning why he was mocking, the father was mocking Rome at the table, like, there goes his pills again. That's why he's, like, letting out his frustration. Right, Cause, and, and almost, like, when I hear that, I'm thinking, okay, holy crap, like, if you knew about the suicide, like, is it the pills from the suicide? But we know it's not, so we know that it's the antidepressants. It's not necessarily the pills that he literally tried to swallow for a suicide. For that, so, yes. Yeah. So no, I don't think so. I mean, I think that he, I think it's, it, Rome is slowly coming into understanding of his, like for himself, like, Hey, I've been taking a lot of my anger out on my dad and this is how I feel. So almost when you're in the midst of something how the heck can you explain it to someone else if you can't even define it for yourself? So Exactly. That's a very yeah. good point. And especially when you are, I mean, having the household that he grew up in where he has to, like, keep a strong demeanor. Oh, yeah. Also, I guess because now that we're talking about it, he's supposed to be the bigger guy, as his mm-hmm. father was preaching to him, that because of his brother being just a little bit so, like, juvenile in some sense yeah. and not taking Free things spirit, seriously. Like- <laughs> yes, and not really appreciative of it. But but then it's like, well, why as a father are you not acknowledging that? And I just, I right. I think the writers have done a very good job of it to like implement a message of like, you know, just because a, a person, whether it's your child or somebody on the surface looks like they're doing great, doesn't mean that internally they're not. And of course, we always want that from our parents, yeah. some piece or token of appreciation. Yeah. I think Rome is the epitome of, um, you know, the the trend or the hashtag that was going around, check on your strong friend. I know, like, now we're just, like, you know, check on your friends, period. Check on people. Check on, you know, anyone you know. Just smile for crying out loud. But I feel like he's the epitome of that hashtag and that trend of check on your strong friends. Like, he has so much that he has to carry Yes. And so much expectations. And sometimes the norm, which I feel like his dad is seeing, like, oh, you're you're always this way. You're always strong. You're always the one to pick it up. Sometimes the norm is almost like, it, like you said, it's not appreciated. It's almost expected. Mm. And sometimes that expectation is definitely a lot for that quote, you know, air quote, strong friend. Yes. So I... I 100% agree with you. It's it's very true. I mean, it's almost like, and I don't want to derail from the show or anything, but it's like entrepreneurs or people who are just very high up there, you just never really know how much hardship they have to have had to carry within themselves and continuously do. And it's like, you know, you just have to make sure everybody is okay, whether they seem weaker or not. But like everybody and especially strong people, they probably carry more than what they're going to express like Rome. Yeah. And, And actually, this is a very like, I've got to be so proud of him in a sense that he still even didn't come forward and but do you think he should though do you think he should tell his dad on and brother that and and do you think he might at well at one point to about the suicide yes or suicide attempt rather yes i i do feel like once he is ready i would like to see rome talk about it more um i just i do not think that he's ready i i think every within every testimony there's strength and when you find that strength to say something a lot of the times you see how many lives you touch and that alone is support so it's almost like a a therapeutic 
release because you know you're so terrified to share your story and then when you finally do it's not just a burden off but you start to hear all of these people say you know you thank you for being so strong you helped me through this i also did it let's and it's like this community of mm -hmm. love that goes around you and starts to open up yeah and i feel like that is stronger than almost any pill i'm no yeah. professional <laughs> i'm no professional i'm no doctor you know I don't, but i feel like that alone can be so strong and Definitely. so healing so i do think that he should say something um and also just to be like you know what it, this is realistic and you never know his dad may have had suicidal thoughts or just you know something crazy we like just, that yeah so you never know and especially his brother because he's going through you know divorce and he's himself feeling low and he doesn't have money and you know, that alone can be a lot for a, a male, for anyone, but I know that men normally carry that big burden. Yes. Um, but I also, like, I really want to include Regina, like, yes. cause, continuously still, yes. Yeah, she's cause she's strong important. too, and yes. it's almost like two strong people, you never know, like, she's gonna, she might reach her breaking point one day, and yeah, well, I mean, she's had like this pressure with the restaurant and <laughs> yeah. thinking that the blogger was going to come and blogger. then it did it, she did it and got the <laughs> place mixed up. But I kind of see her as well detaching herself because mm -hmm. she is so focused on her restaurant. I mean, yeah. obviously, rightfully so, she has the fear of it closing down because of a previous experience. But I worry about her. I worry yeah. about her so much because like she's yeah. really getting into the business. But I feel like I, I can see her kind of neglecting Rome a little bit because yeah. she's more concerned about the restaurant. So I hope that she can come back a little bit and balance it out. It's a tough balance. <laughs> Right. It is a hundred percent tough balance, it's, but I see that. That's true, you know. Yeah. That's like a learning curve for all of us. Like how, and as I don't want to say as especially as a woman because it's both genders. Like how right. do you balance being able to be there for your partner as well as focusing on your business or work? Yeah, especially in the back of her mind because she's like, I have to keep an eye on him because of everything he's going through. So could you imagine the pressure that she feels yes. <laughs> just on that alone, like having to worry and i time. guess the seeing that the father and the brother were both there she thought okay i can just focus on this these three are good but ultimately <laughs> no filled no. with a lot of frustration however this situation did also teach us again how when something gets like let's say penetrated in a sense full of anger and then it's like a pandora box opens up and then we yeah. see rome and his brother omar then coming together over a bottle of beer just as guys and guys do to to mend what sounds like a slightly burnt bridge and it's coming together now where they're both opening up about their problems mm -hmm. because neither of them seem to know each other uh, or what has happened in the past year. Right, especially on, a, on an intimate level. Yeah, and see, that's the thing, you know, you have, when you have siblings, it's like, you, you feel a connection, but also a disconnect sometimes, especially if you yeah. come from two very separate places or whatever happens. So hopefully so them two can, continue well like to open up at this point and i going back to what i was asking you and how you said mm -hmm. yes i would like um rome to talk about his suicide attempt i feel like rome will open up to his brother yeah about it i think so feel too. more comfortable because his brother is going to open up about it speaking of building bridges there's one that sadly that's going to be broken which is eddie and catherine mm. So we immediately hear him saying, I have a mediating session, AK standing for divorce. Yeah. Um, and they have this session with their lawyer and they're like, not fighting actually over who gets to keep what. And she's like, no, you have the table. And he's like, no, you have it. So right. even the lawyer's like, that's like the best, I, I feel like the best situation. The, yeah, the yeah. best mediated, uh, mediation I've ever seen in my life. But, but the then only not. mediation, which <laughs> is a not. huge mediation, is yeah. who's theirs guard, I mean, gu parents, guardian. Guardians. Yeah. Yes, guardian parents. And initially it was John and Delilah, John's passing and Delilah's well involvement with. Pregnant with Eddie's baby. With Eddie. And that <laughs> on top of it all. Oh. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so this is a real sticky situation. Yeah. And um, 
we we then see something shockingly happen, which is not shockingly for the show, but Catherine right. gets into an accident, having Eddie then like Eddie. Ugh. I mean, this I, it was kind of you know just kind of like oh how did Eddie just appear on the roads and find <laughs> right. her there? Um, like I felt like there was a brief moment of exchange of look where he was actually genuinely sad and concerned and. Mm distraught that she might have passed away there was a look between them two i felt like oh this might rekindle after seeing like i thought the same thing that's what i was just gonna ask you yeah i did i i thought okay this is a vulnerable moment and so many people obviously rekindle at such vulnerable moments however that happens yes i was like this is going to be it because I, I at first thought on the last episode whenever um, I think Eddie realized that she had another man over and I was like, OK, he's either going to just realize that it's never going to happen again or it's almost going to be like a uh, the inner motivation, so to speak, like crap, I'm a little jealous. Why am I jealous? OK, because I have feelings for her. Wow, do I really want this woman? So. And then I saw that look, and I I did I thought this, this the yeah. same thing, but <laughs> and then Catherine's just like and and even when they went back and and Catherine looks over at Theo's things and she, she then expresses how she thought she had she was nearly not gonna ever see him again. Yeah. I, I genuinely thought like she might say, "Hey, should we try and work this out somehow?" Yeah. But. But I can see her big frustration coming out. Yeah. Like her anger is actually, she expresses, Yeah. I keep on questioning why we're doing this and it's because of you. You've like messed this up. And Oof. that was like, That's tough. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, of course, rightfully so, she's going to have that anger. But I yeah. was kind of, I was surprised. And I don't know. I, I'm still having mixed feelings about yeah. their divorce and Theo. I, I know that we've said it before. Like, yes. obviously, no one wants anyone to get a divorce. Obviously, you want to feel like you're trying literally everything. So we're not advocating whatsoever for their divorce. But it's and also only... not for cheaters. But it's just, and, and it's yes. just so hard in the situation and not for with cheaters. a family. Yeah, and I think um, sadly, I. I do kind of want to just see them move on separately. Mm. And I never, I never want to be that, that one who like puts a seal of approval on for a divorce for crying out loud. But I, I think at this point I really want as a viewer, I just want these two individuals to be happy. Like they're both amazing. Yeah. They have their strengths and they have their weaknesses, just like every other human being on this earth. Um, but I, I do want them both to be happy. And if they I are, just don't think it's going to be yeah, together. No, they are always going to be connected because yeah. of Theo. That is for sure. Um, but I agree with you that it's just this, even she expresses that the reason why she initially was against his decision of having Gary as the guardian mm. was because she wanted to fight against, um, against, sorry <laughs> against oh, eddie's sorry. decision so like because it was eddie's decision yeah um and that's something that she acknowledges like i this is something that i wrote down about her being i want to give you the benefit of the doubt and take responsibility for where we ended up so she's mm. the this i feel like was the first time that she expressed anything from to do with the Blame. past yes because of him causing this infidelity she's also now starting to take that on yeah i don't know though if she should i'm i'm i yeah because she's been she's just been such a hard worker yeah for do, sure. do you feel like she should be taking on the blame i i don't think so no i mean i think it's even but i don't do you mean like do I think that she should be like casting the blame like just saying like saying this like I'm taking responsibility for your actions oh I don't think so because yeah. I mean what kind of message does that what kind of message does that show to everybody else like oh I'm the reason why you cheated yeah or... I mean I don't think she I felt like there was a glimpse of that that she was trying to express mm -hmm. but like 
not like I felt like that was very strong of her to say, right? Um, to bring out because she's then trying to break down as to why he may have done that. Um, I, th I think acknowledging like a little self reflection of what could have led to this, but I don't think necessarily like don't don't take it all. Yeah, Catherine, don't, don't, don't no, <laughs> like not no, not at all. I but I do think that there's uh there's strength and there's healing in trying to identify the point at which things started to turn so that you can make yourself better not necessarily to find it's not so black and white all the time like no. it's not your fault or your fault like it's don't take all of that because it's, it's so much on a person yeah okay. yeah i think i mean ultimately we, I, I feel like we're re reminded again as to why things didn't work out between the two. And yeah. um, what kind of annoyed me in this situation was D Delilah. I'm not, mm. I know she's g going through hardship with the whole situation of yeah. the Rutledge or whatever is still going on there. But like, why did she, so she calls up Eddie and he was supposed to be there for her for the baby seat and mm -hmm. be, while well, they they're the only two that know and nobody else does but like mm -hmm. he then catches the call of her and says I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you I've ha had to be right. with uh, Catherine all day and then Catherine catches that and I just felt like so sorry for her again and yeah. I was annoyed that Delilah was like you know send her my regards I hope she's okay after the accident it's like Delilah why don't you just call Catherine yourself yeah why are you getting into the mix of things again yeah like let's let's not pass along yeah messages to so because the Catherine and Delilah there is a a little bit obviously a a little bit tension of a relationship but Catherine's helping her along this ride of the money that she owes in Rutledge so she has all the right in the world to just hit her up and say hey I'm sorry to hear what yes. you're going through know that I'm thinking about you I because it's not like they haven't been in communication about other stuff so exactly no I didn't like so that I kind of almost feel like now that we're talking about this I uh, actually, I should save this for my predictions, okay? <laughs> okay Which we're going to get into very soon because uh, we're ki we're coming to the ending of yeah. we see whoever she is. She says she's not Barbara Morgan, but she ends up at Delilah's house in front of it. Taking that call from Mitch, Mitch, which we heard in last episode. Exactly. And he's like, let it go. Yeah. What? And she's like, but Delilah's pregnant. So mm. that I am just... Dying. And she seemed like super surprised. Like she didn't was, know. She didn't of know. Not. How would she know though? <sighs> but it's like, what is her involvement? What is this case? What is going on? Mm -hmm. We're dying to find out. One more episode, mm -hmm. will we find out or not? So we're soon getting into our predictions. But before that, let's get into our special segment where we like to share our hashtag ABTV little things that we take away. First up, what did you take away from what we talked about in this episode? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tigera. Uh there's so many, but I will say um I'll say testimony. So my ABTV little thing is testimony. So I think uh, Rome they're struggling, not just Rome, but so many other characters in um in this episode almost like found themselves at the breaking point of saying something, whether mm. that be like uh, about their past, whether that be about their feelings. So I think um, that's the little thing that I took from this episode. I would just encourage anyone to share what's on your mind. Share, like, obviously without intentions of being completely rude, but um, <laughs> but yeah, just testimony. I think that it's really important. I think that it brings people together, whether that be family or friends. So. Yeah, my heart was on that this episode. Clarity. I yeah. love that. Yes, because that's like, that's what brings people together and mm -hmm. gives a better foundation of a relationship and grounder understanding and yeah. empathy as well. So hopefully Rome will be able to talk about it, although I, I cannot imagine how hard it is and yeah. to maintain a brave face. And maybe because of the father saying, I know I don't have to worry about you, you also should because I felt like there was a brief moment he might have said something, but then he held back. Yeah. So exactly. let's see. Um, my biggest takeaway here was from the two lovebirds, Gary and, <laughs> and Maggie. Gary first up saying, you don't have to, and this is 
something between Delilah and Gary because Delilah messed up with the whole Danny and date situation. Gary says, you don't have to be perfect. You just got to be there. And Aww. I think that's great. Like, yeah. you know, we all try and be perfect. I think imperfections is what makes you perfect. You know, we love each other imperfections exactly. more. That's what makes you real and lovable. And Maggie then saying, old buck, it's not about my old bucket list anymore. It's going to be... My old bucket list was about my past. My new one will be about the future. future. And because they were helping out their friends, it made her want to be there so much more. And that just comes to show when you give to others and you help out your friends, you're supporting your loved ones. Yes. It just makes you feel so much more empowered and stronger and want to live more. Absolutely. So I feel like we've had some strong takeaways I in love these it. in this episode. Support one another. Uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got uh, a little piece of news. Um, I found a little some. It was like, actually it wasn't me who found it. <laughs> Tanya, I gotta shout it out to you. Hey Tanya. Hey hey hey. <laughs> the no she um, tweeted at us that the nominees for outstanding supporting actor in a drama series. Um, are Jesse Williams, Joe Morton, so Jesse Williams from Grey's Anatomy, Joe Morton from Scandal, Juicy Smollett from Empire, Wendell Pierce from Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan, and Rom 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 Romani, Malco, a million little things. His name is so darn close to his character. I know, that's why I was like, Rome, no so Romani. <laughs> um, yes, nominated for the 50th NAACP Image Awards. Woo! So let's hope that he gets it. It will be airing on Saturday, March the 30th. So excited. So we're rooting for him, yes. I'm, so, I'm as a person, like off camera, I'm so loving his, like, because he's always been in comedy. He doesn't do or, or didn't do drama too much. I just, I love Which how is he's amazing. Grown. He is freaking phenomenal. Like, he carries so much feeling and emotion in this show yes. like kudos to you like he is amazing I'm just like show us more right. what else can you show is us is there nothing you can do like seriously what are the is walls there, and barriers is there you anything you can't do I guess I said that wrong is there nothing you can is do is there nothing you can do that's horrible <laughs> we love you Romani we love yes you. we're rooting for you um, and let's get into our prediction so for our final episode and now your after buzz Woo. TV predictions Ooh. I have two questions that I want to ask people in the comments mm -hmm. for predictions. I want to see them. One, the whole Barbara Morgan, obviously. That, that whole situation, we're still predicting like every five seconds. So who do you think Barbara Morgan is? What do you think its story is? I think at this point, it's more so about backstory. But do we think that Maggie will live? I have that same question. That quote, the whole, like, uh, you read it about the future, like, my bucket list is yes. about the future. Like, oh, it's that moment that I was like, no. Like, you you can't get her to 80% healed. And then, so I'm including that in my predictions. Unfortunately, I am not too sure that she will make it yeah I think I've, I've said this as well before I was like yeah. when she was racing and that tree in the background with the red and as it was like foreshadowing something I pains me to say this that yeah. I feel like that's going to happen and I don't know what's going to happen to Gary yeah. but Barbara Morgan um though don't th think about that because I want to hear your thoughts on that too sorry to cut you off I'm, what no, were you no, going to no. say are you finished like because I don't know I was just thinking like seeing how relate the relationship between Delilah and Eddie is still not ending in a sense because of the bump mm -hmm. and Catherine having witnessed a little bit of that phone call I almost feel like it's gonna come out it's gonna come uh, out 100%. the baby's gonna come out yes and then um be because Maggie might not make it I feel like uh Eddie and Gary are gonna be each other's support system in a sense oh. Um, okay. Catherine's gonna move on and might rekindle things with Hunter. Okay. Not sure, but maybe. Um, and that's a good prediction. That's interesting. Yeah, I this whole um, the Barbara Morgan thing because I know we uh, we have to uh, wrap up, but Barbara Morgan, I think she felt some type of way seeing her pregnant, and Mitch is like, let it go, let it go. That whole, like, John having a second family kind of thing is starting to make a little bit more sense, even though I think that's too easy. 
Do you think Mitch is her, his son? John's son. No, Mitch is too old, I think. Yeah, he sounds a little Mitch old. is like, I think Mitch is like the boyfriend of who we think might be Barbara Morgan. And maybe her seeing Delilah pregnant was like, hold on a second. They weren't supposed to be having sex. They weren't. I didn't know. I don't know. It's, do you think? It's, because it's I don't think strange. Because, because let's think? go back to the picture in the apartment that was like, I feel like his high school sweetheart that he didn't want to talk about and maybe impregnated, impregnate. I'm getting so oh, excited I can't that, even talk right now. Yeah, no, impregnated her <laughs> at a young age. But who knows? I mean, Drop I... Drop a comment. What do you think? Let's see what you think. Please <laughs> let need, us know. We, we need, need our your extended thoughts. Panel. Well, on that note, thank you so much for tuning in. Please let us know your thoughts of this episode and what is going on like Barbara <laughs> Morgan what your predictions are as well and your hashtag ABTV little thing take away Takira where can we find you on social media yeah you can find me Takira Shabre on Instagram and Twitter at Takira underscore Shabre and in the comments I love to see them yes I love to look <laughs> at your comments as well we love to reply to them keep the conversation going my name is Yasmin Tanres and you can find me on all social media as well at Yasmin Tanres thank you so much for tuning in bye, bye. see you next week last episode <laughs> <laughs>